Welcome to the Leaving Cert Biology channel. This ties hand in hand with our website, leavingcertbiology.ie, which is a platform for fifth and sixth year students in Ireland studying Leaving Cert Biology. Of course, we have our TikTok and Instagram page at leavingcertbiology.ie as well, where we offer completely free videos, tips, tricks, exam strategy and trends. And on our website, we have exam paper structure, timing, all of our completely free podcast episodes and so much more. Our aim is to support students all over Ireland. In this video, we are moving away from unit one, we're moving on to unit two, and we are having a look at cell structure. This chapter builds the foundation for many other chapters to come, including the really important photosynthesis, respiration, enzymes, all of those. So this is a vitally important chapter to get your head around. First of all, the cell definition is the basic unit of a living thing. Cells we know are way too small to be seen using our naked eyes, so in order to view them, we must use a microscope. Okay, so cell definition, please learn it, basic unit of a living thing. And from here then, before we go on to the structure difference between plant and animal cells, we are going to look at the microscope. So there are two types of microscopes. You have a simple microscope that uses only one lens, and then there's compound microscope that uses multiple lenses, which are the ones that we use in the school lab. The microscope that we use in the school lab is an example of a compound microscope and it is known as a light microscope. However, there are other types of microscopes that do exist. So we need to learn about number one, the light microscope, and number two, the electron microscope. Electron microscope is used to view cells in high resolution. They do cost quite a lot of money, which is why we use the light microscope in schools. They're cheap, easy to use, and we don't need to see the inside of a cell in great detail. Okay, so let's have a look then at the light microscope parts and functions. Eyepiece lens for magnification, nose piece holds the objective lenses. Objective lenses, there are three, usually by four, by 10, and by 40 powers. Clips hold the slide in place. Stage is where the slide is placed onto. Then you have the condenser, focuses light onto the slide. The diaphragm used to adjust the amount of light shining onto the slide. Don't get it confused with the respiratory system. The light supplies light to the slide. Coarse focus roughly focuses the image. Fine focus finally focuses the image on the slide. How to use your light microscope. Switch on the light, lower the stage to the bottom, place the slide onto the stage, secure in place with clips. Start using the lowest power objective lens. Use the coarse focus, followed by the fine focus to precisely focus your image in just the amount of light using your diaphragm. Then repeat with the medium and high power lenses and always draw what you see. This can appear in section B experiment section. Magnification then is calculated by multiplying the power of the eyepiece lens by the power of the objective lens that you are using. For example, if the power of the eyepiece lens is by 10 and the power of the objective lens is by four, the overall magnification is by 40. You multiply them together. There's an exam question for you to try. This one is a past paper question. Then we have the light microscope. There are two types. TEM, transmission electron microscope, shows the internal structure of a cell in great detail. Scanning electron microscope, SEM, shows the surface. S for scanning, S for surface, T for transmission, T for internal. Then we have some important definitions. All cells arise or come from other pre-existing similar cells. This statement is known as the continuity of life, also known as biogenesis. Ultrastructure is the structure of a cell seen under an electron microscope. You must say electron microscope. Protoplasm are all living parts inside the membrane of a cell. Okay, so ultrastructure cannot be seen using a light microscope. Now we're moving on to the structure and diagram of our animal cell. All of these structures also occur in the plant cell, but the plant cell does have a few more. We are gonna discuss each of these in detail. You are required to be able to draw a plant and an animal cell, know all of the functions of these parts, be able to label them, and be able to distinguish between a plant and an animal cell. As I said, a plant cell has a few more organelles. We don't call them structures, we call them organelles. So let's look at the first one. We have the cell membrane. It's composed of a phospholipid bilayer with inter and glycoproteins. It's known as a fluid mosaic model as they have components capable of moving. The membrane controls what substances enter and exit the cell. We know the cell membrane is selectively permeable. It allows certain substances in and keeps others out. It supports the cell and retains the cell contents. There we have a diagram of the phospholipid bilayer. Next, we have the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm minus the organelles is known as the cytosol. It's the jelly-like liquid that contains and stabilizes the organelles. It is where the majority of metabolic reactions occur and it contains sugars, which is vital for diffusion and osmosis. You will come back to cytoplasm particularly in that chapter. Okay, so that is number two. 
Number three then is the mitochondria, plural mitochondrion means one. This supplies energy in the form of ATP during respiration. It has numerous infoldings known as cristae to increase the surface area to produce more energy. Some cells have more mitochondria than others, for example muscle cells, because they contract a lot more regularly. Mitochondria in cells also contain the genetic material DNA. Then we have the ribosomes. These make proteins in the process known as protein synthesis, which is an anabolic reaction in animals. They are not surrounded by a membrane, so they're not a membrane-bound organelle. They are found in bacteria, which are prokaryotic, and they are composed of RNA and proteins. Remember, prokaryotes have no nucleus or no membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotes, such as animal and plant cells, do. Next organelle is the nucleus. It's surrounded by a nuclear membrane with gaps known as nuclear pores to allow the passage of some materials into and out of the cell. The nucleus contains the genetic materials DNA and RNA and it controls the cell processes or activities of the cell. Cells that contain a nucleus are known as eukaryotic and eukaryotes contain the genetic material DNA and RNA in their nucleus. The next structure we have is the dark region at the center of the nucleus known as the nucleolus, again only found in eukaryotes. It's located in the center, it contains chromatin or chromatin. This is where ribosomes are made. Remember, chromatin is only in a cell when the cell is not dividing. When the cell is dividing, chromatin becomes structures known as chromosomes. We find our genes, DNA and protein on the chromosomes. Then we have our structures of a plant cell, we have cell wall and chloroplasts. Permanent vacuole, I'll tell you why that's important. If you were asked what two organelles are never found in an animal cell, you can only get away with saying cell wall and chloroplast. You cannot say vacuole because animal cells can sometimes have a vacuole. Okay, so sometimes present in an animal cell. Not always, so you can't use that as an answer. We're going to start off with the vacuole. So permanent vacuole is surrounded by a membrane. It stores water and sugar, gives cells strength, larger in plants than in animals, and removes waste. Animals can have a temporary vacuole in some cells, not all. Plants have a permanent one. Going to be particularly important as well when you could do amoeba and you do osmoregulation with the contractile vacuole later on. Then we have the cell wall. The cell wall is made of the polysaccharide cellulose, which is a carbohydrate. It provides strength and support to the plant. They don't have muscles or bones. It's fully permeable. Fully permeable means it allows everything to pass in and out. Remember the cell membrane is selectively or semi-permeable. It only allows certain substances to pass in and out. So that's the difference between the cell wall and the cell membrane. Remember cell wall found in plants, not in animals. Chloroplast also found in plants, never in animals. This is the site of photosynthesis. It contains DNA and a green pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the chemical that gives plants their green color and absorbs light energy in photosynthesis. So mitochondria and chloroplasts also contain genetic material DNA. They're both membrane bound organelles. So they are only found in eukaryotes, not in prokaryotes. Prokaryotes mean cells that do not have a membrane enclosed nucleus or membrane enclosed organelles, for example, bacteria. In this case, pro means no. Think that they rhyme. It's the opposite of what you might think. Then we have eukaryotes. These have a nucleus and have a membrane bound organelle. So they are plants, animals, fungi, protista. Okay, so eukaryotes have a membrane bound nucleus and membrane bound organelles. Then we have unicellular versus multicellular. Unicellular means a single celled organism, for example, bacteria and amoeba. Multicellular means more than one cell, for example, plants and animals. These words can cause confusion. Lastly is our mandatory experiments that can appear in section B, preparing and examining a plant and an animal cell. Remember my brand new experiment book, over 100 pages of procedure, theory, with the workbook, solutions, etc. equates to 15% of your paper. And now we have our recap. You have to be able to identify the parts of a plant cell and an animal cell seen under a light microscope, giving the function of cell walls, cell membrane, nucleus, cytoplasm, vacuole, and chloroplast. You also have to identify the ultrastructure and give a function of cell membrane, mitochondria, and chloroplast, nuclear pores, ribosomes, and DNA. Then you have to know the existence and definition of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. I really hope that's clear. Please let me know your comments for future topics and if you enjoyed this and please like and subscribe.